The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 11th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that everything in life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can let those fingers do the walking. That means go ahead, send me an email, send it early, and send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And if you would be kind enough to put radio show question in that subject heading. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then, well, any ping will do so let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific tuesday of course this is tiger financial news network i'm steve rhodes welcome to the show right now a bit of a mixed bag out there the dow's up 100 points the other indices are trading lower s&p's off 15 nasdaq 195 russell's down four semis off 64 tranny's down 24 gold's up three bucks silver's off 22 cents lights recruit is back a buck 50 natural gas is basically flat the 30 treasury trading out at 125.01 that's up 27 ticks now lead the charge dollar wise to the upside you've got amgen up 16 bucks seven percent behind that dice therapeutics up nearly 15 or 58%, O'Reilly Automotive up 13, about 2%, Regeneron, Pharmaceuticals up uh, 10 bucks, one and three tenths percent. To the downside is Mercado Libre up 38 bucks, 4%. Azimil Holdings up 18 bucks, 4%. BlackRock down 14, 15 bucks, up nearly 3%. Calais Corp is down uh, 14 bucks, nearly 5%. Lamb Research up 14. 4%, certainly a uh, stinger inside the semis. But it is the Dow that is trading to the upside. So why don't we at least start there intraday-wise. We'll change over. We'll switch over to our white background charts, get a feel for what the Dow equity future contract charts are communicating to you and I. If we look and we begin by the uh, left-hand chart, the upper left-hand chart, that's a daily time frame. The daily time frame has a sell or buy the D point pattern. That confirmed last Monday with that big old bullish engulfing candle. Price is pulled back. It's testing and rejecting so far the bottom of its daily profile. That profile levels out at the 29,128 area. We can also see that today's price action has triggered a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. Now, what that means is that prices are stretched. The market is stretched to the downside, even the Dow on its daily time frame. And if we were to see a bullish reversal candle, that would signal that we should see a rally. The second thing that you need to see inside the Dow equity future contract is a close above that red oscillator and change line. She's printing at 29,338. Now, that may change by a few points during the day. In fact, that might. It will change. But watch that level. A close above the oscillator and change line would suggest a further rally. Now, that further rally might just be back to its highs around the 3,500 level. We'll have to take things one step at a time. As I take a look at the um, five-hour time frame chart out here, what do we have inside the Dow Equity Future contract? Really not much. Other than getting back and testing a swing point out here, yeah, that's really what it appears to have been trying to do, but it's, it didn't even get down to the swing point on a five-hour time frame chart. So not much there. What we do have, though, that we would pay attention to on the five-hour time frame chart is also its 
oscillator and change line and the center of its profile. So we'll make 29,412 the real key level that price would need to close above to be signaling to you and I that the market is ready for a relief rally. And I say relief because conditions are oversold. If we take a look at the advanced decline oscillator inside the New York Stock Exchange, we're not looking at that chart right now. I just throw that out there as food for thought. The four hour time frame chart, I have a look down in the four hour time frame chart, there's a clear A to B equal CD pattern to the downside. This generated more than a one to one A to B equal CD. It was confirmed with a bullish reversal candle at 10 o'clock this morning. Price is above its oscillator and change line. It has a new profile that is formed. So that's very cool for each of you because that new profile has resistance where the sellers are at. The top of that profile is up at 29,420. So now we were talking about 29,412 before on the five hour chart. Let's make that 29,420 as a key level for you to observe. The two hour time frame chart has confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Price right now is trading above the top of its profile, which is 29,213. So the two hour chart is saying, I want to make a move. Now that move could just be back to its prior highs, not much uh, further from where we're at right now. That's up at the 29,539 level. But if price gets above that, then it's going to signal move up to 31.11. The 60-minute time frame chart is taking on TD nine count breakdown resistance. That is at 29.328. If price closes above that at 12 noon, doesn't matter where it's at at 11.12 in the morning. But if price closes above that, that's another indication of a further rally to come. The 30-minute time frame chart is doing the same thing. And its TD nine count breakdown level is also at the same price point. That's at 29.328. So at 11.30, that's 18 minutes from now, if price closes above that, that's going to suggest to move back to, right now I just called about 29,500 from the chart. Yeah, about 29,500 area that we are looking at, maybe a bit, a bit above that. Uh, so that's the 30-minute uh, time frame chart. No topping signal or pattern that is present here on the uh, 15 or the 10-minute chart. So the uh, Dow is saying, I want to rally. And that confirmation now will come with a close above 29,420. And obviously, you're watching that uh, 29, 328 level on the shorter term time frame charts, the 30 and the 60 minute time frame. Now, the question is, do the other indices show that? Do they show that same set of patterns out here or where are the problems? So let's do this here. And for some reason, folks, my apology, it is taking just a little bit of time for these charts here to uh, update. I don't know what it is I've got running in the background, but it is something that is taking just a tad of time. So in the meantime, what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch over to a different screen. We'll just take a look at a couple of different things. So the markets are definitely in an oversold condition. So let's take a look at that. That was the New York Stock Exchange Advanced Client Oscillator. I had mentioned that uh, during that uh, previous uh, review of what the Dow was doing. Here we go, well, it was, it's, it's no longer, uh, it's still down towards oversold. Yeah, the, the breeding I'm looking at is panel number two from the top. The reading was minus 114. It was below the minus 150 area, probably at about 10 minutes to 11. But nonetheless, conditions are still oversold. Uh, if we take a look at the NQ charts, they've now populated. They're in the process of fin finishing that population here. So again, you can see this is taking longer than it has, than it does typically on a daily basis. But back to the daily time frame. The daily time frame for the NQ, much different than the uh, Dow. If price closes below last Monday's low, that low out there is at the uh, 11, I'm sorry, 10, 8, 90, 75 level, or 10, 8, 90 right now. But if price closes below that, that buy the D pattern goes away. Price should be below the bottom of its profile on the red oscillator change line. And that would say the NQ continues to head lower. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We'll finish looking at the NQ. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, 
Deris Park Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education. Investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, up, folks. So we'll take a look at the NQ charts. You know, before we go on and take a look at each of those time frames out, let's take a look at the uh, TAS market breadth for these four time frames, the hourly, the four hour, the daily, and the weekly. You can see they're all in the red zone out here. So if we look at the 60 minute time frame, and we'll look at a 30 minute chart here momentarily. Um, as we take a look at the 60 minute time frame, what we're gonna see is there are 16, only 16 of the NDX 100 stocks that are trading above profile. Top of the profile, folks, that is where sellers reside. That is your resistance level. If you're trading above the top of a profile, that's bullish. Well, there are 72 instruments where price is trading below the bottom of the profile. The bottom of the profile is where the buyers are lined up. Well, the buyers have been overrun, basically, and uh, you have negative market breadth. So what that tells us, what that tells you and I, is the NASDAQ 100 does not have an all-clear sign, and any rally should see some selling go with it hand-in-hand. Hand. Now, not that this can't get changed out here throughout the day, these TAS market breadth numbers, but right now, as we speak at 11.19 in the morning, they're all set to the bearish side. I don't have this for the Dow 30, but we do for the S&P 500. You'll see that all of it die time frames the four the two uh, the, the one to four the daily and the weekly they are also in the bearish zone out here on the s p 500 it's 83 instruments trading above the top and 285 below the bottom so again market conditions even though we're going to take a look at charts out here and intraday time frames are telling us that a bounce is being attempted out here remember you're still dealing with negative market breadth and that negative market breadth is going to create or should create, you know, selling cycles out here. Now, the difference is here is the NDX 100 for its 30 minute time frame. And so if we're going to see changes in trends or anything, they're going to happen on the shorter term time frame. 30 should bleed into 60, 60 should bleed into 240, 240 in the daily. Well, right now, the 30 minute time frame for the NDX has 44 instruments where price is trading above the top of that profile and 20 below the bottom. Let's just take a look at what's going on inside the S&P 500. And for the S&P 500, the numbers go like this as soon as it gets populated. 262 above the top, 41 below the bottom. So that helps us out when we take a look at the 30-minute time frame charts out here. Yeah, let's shut that down. I'm wondering if that is uh, possibly taking up some of my, I'm going to turn off the other one as well uh, for the moment. So now back to the NQ. 
which we know for a 30 minute time frame has positive mark. Let's just simply go take a good 30 minute chart out here. Let's see what it's communicating to you and I. So on a 30 minute basis, this has a road momentum indicator signal, but it does not have the bullish reversal candle that Stevie likes to see to confirm a bottom. Right now what price is doing is dealing with resistance. As I said though, the bottom of profile is support. What happens when you close below support? Well, oftentimes old support can become new resistance. So that's the level to be watching. On a 30 minute basis, where this candle here that we're in right now will close in a little bit less than nine minutes. If price can close above the top of that, the bottom of that profile, 10.898, or 10.898 basically right now, then that should signal to us that price will try to make it to where there's fair value with inside this profile. And that is at the 10.937 level. At 10.937, you have both buyers and sellers. Now, because that line, 10.937, is a little bit closer in proximity to the top, than it is to the bottom. This has a slightly bearish structure to it. And so the sellers reside in the zone. Well, first they're right now at the 10898 level, you know that, but it close above that, will then take on a whole new batch of sellers. And that would be the secondary in our defense. Now it'd be at the 10937 level. And the safeties, they're sitting at a 10964 and the goal line on any move higher for the NQ would be 1102925. If you close above that, then obviously it was a two pointer that they went for and not the uh, mark the uh, point after. Now, let's go back to the uh, daily time frame. Again, if price uh, closes below the uh, low of Monday, that's going to negate that by the D point pattern. On a uh, five hour time frame chart, I don't have any kind of a bottoming signal. On the four hour chart, what we do have is a TD nine count bottom. Now that pattern is going to complete here at 2 p.m. It actually confirmed as we came to the 10 o'clock time frame. So you've got a TD nine count bottom no matter what for the four hour time frame. So if the NQ on a 30 minute basis is able to get above the profile levels that you and I took a look at, then what you would be watching for is in addition to that at two o'clock, so let's say that happens between now and when the polar bear comes on the air. What you would be looking for is a close above its oscillator and change line for the four hour time frame. That is currently printed at 10.964. I would change that. Um, I'm not sure to where. Call it 10.975, 80, something around there. If price is trading above that, it's not as if it's out of the woods. It would appear that it's starting to get out of the woods. It's using its pool land to cut down some timber out there, but it still has a bout of sellers to deal with. And a counter trend rally inside the NQ would run out of steam at either 11.043, but more likely than not at 11.101. And even if price gets above that, there's a TD nine count breakdown resistance level, and that's at the 11.136.50. That is the price point that the four hour time frame chart for the NQ must close above to suggest an even further rally, a further rally with another round of sellers. And those sellers at this point in time reside at 11,333. So no way is the NQ out of the woods, but you take this stuff one step at a time. It's that 30 minute chart that you're first watching. If that uh, tends to get above uh, resistance levels, you can then look at the hourly time frame chart. The hourly time frame chart shows a road momentum indicator signal. Again, here, no bottom signal. Now, price is taking on the center of its bullish structured 60 minute profile. If this is only a counter trend move, the 60 minute chart says price will find resistance at 10, 9, 28. So that in essence is a two hour chart. You've got a uh, potential roads momentum indicator bottom. This candle here closes at 12 noon. So you've got about 36 more minutes before that unfolds. If you do get that bottoming signal, then it's real level resistance is going to be the 10, 960 area out there. So hopefully you were taking notes. You wrote some of those figures down on your pad of paper. I'm not asking you to trade the NQ. What I'm asking you to do is to be aware of the patterns that exist on it. You are going to get much better signals by looking at the equity future contracts for your trading decisions. Um, so if you're trading the S&P uh, and you're looking at the SPY, that's nice and that's good, but really you should be looking at the ES Mini. In the case of the NQ, obviously you might be trading the Qs, the QLD, QID, all of those Q products out there. But it's really the intraday charts here on the uh, NQs that you want to be paying attention to. They'll provide you with the best amount of information out there. So we've got about a minute before we go to the break. We do have a request out here. This will come in from Jim P. Jim writes in. He says, I am very long TBT. So let's get over here to these... Uh, our three daily, weekly, monthly charts out here, the TBT. I am very long TBT. Good for you. Congratulations there, Jim. Which is a two-time, the inverse of the TLT action. Twenty. Do you have a target 
for the TLT. So um, you get it. For, I, I, the targets really. So the same. So even though you're trading TBT at two times. And you're looking at TLT at one times. That's a long position of the 30-year Treasury. And I've got the TBT up on our screen. It's just like I had said just prior to that, Jim, which is if you're trading the SPY, you really want the underlying instrument for the pattern standpoint. If you're not a pattern trader, then you really don't need access to it. But that's if you listen to this show this hour, you know it's really all about the patterns that the market continues to make on an ongoing basis. It doesn't matter about time frames. That's why I use the same tools here. It doesn't matter if it's daily, weekly, two-minute, five-minute, ten-minute, or what have you. The upside target for the TBT, which is not the question that you asked. You asked about the TLT. But the TBT would be its TD9 count breakdown area. And that is up at the uh, 3968 level. Now, you are in bar number nine. This could form a TD9 count top between this week and next. When we get back from this breakout here, Jim, we're going to go take a look at that 30 year treasury for you. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we've got the 30-year uh, Treasury up on our screen out here. And uh, Jim was asking, he's very long, as he says, the TBT. So he is short the 30-year Treasury. So, Jim, on a monthly basis out here, the level that you're going to be watching this month, what you're really pulling for as long as you remain in that TBT position, you would love to see it close below last month's low. Last month's low was 123.30. Right now we're trading at 125.01. And the reason why I say that, Jim, is because you've got a TD9 count bottom, the low occurring on the bar following bar number nine. That's its key support level. 124.10, you've got a TD9 count breakout area. And that's, in essence, what price has tested and so far has held. So certainly a close below that, but really it's a close below last week's, last month's low. If you get a close below that, then you're most certainly, that's a 126.30, you're most certainly going to stick with that position out here. 
So the monthly chart right now, because that TD9 count bottom says it wants to bounce, that bounce would be up in the 142 area. I'm not saying that's what it's going to unfold. In fact, you'd look at other patterns on the weekly and daily time frame chart before you would make such a call. But we do know a close below last month's low, that is what you're really looking for. Now, the weekly time frame chart shows a couple of different patterns. One of the patterns out here, and this is the pattern that was identified by Saratoga Bob, uh, used to be an ex denner out there, is wave number seven. That's letter G at the bottom of my screen. And that's one of the wave patterns that is out there. Now, that needs on a uh, weekly time frame a higher low in order to confirm. So that's one pattern. Another pattern that is out here is bar number nine is likely to complete this week for the weekly time frame. All price needs to do is close below the close of bar number five. That seems like a likely outcome. So you should get at the end of this week on Friday, TD9 count bottom. Now remember, just like the monthly chart, TD9 count pattern bottomed on the bar following bar number nine, that could occur as well this time around. So that says a bottom on a monthly basis may occur between this week and next week. Now, that bottom should then take price up to its red oscillator and change line, currently printing in the 128-ish area. There is also a road momentum indicator signal has been triggered. What that needs, Jim, is a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. So the weekly chart has got potential bottoming signals out here, so you'd want to keep an eye on that. And, of course, then we come back to the daily time frame. And on the daily time frame, there is a buy the D point pattern. That buy the D point pattern took place out here on the trading day of. You can see the nice big old bullish engulfing candle or bull sash candle out here on September 28th. They closed below that low, which is 123.30. We're back to that low again, 123.30. So you've written that down on your pad of paper. You know how important that is on a daily basis. Now, we had looked at a monthly close below that for the monthly time frame. But a daily close below that is going to negate its buy the D point pattern. We can see that, and yesterday was not a close below that level. We can also see Rhodes momentum indicator signal has been triggered. So a bullish reversal candle, today is just an inside day, a bullish reversal candle would generate a, a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. That would suggest a rally, and that rally taking us up to about the 129 level. Now, none of those patterns at this stage here have really come to fruition other than the monthly time frame chart, but the weekly is likely to generate its outcome. If we take a look at short-term time frame charts out or just looking for any significant pattern that we see, it's really the 60-minute, well, it's the 60 and the 30-minute time frame. Let's just go to the 30-minute time frame chart out here. So on a very short-term basis, the 30-minute time frame chart, what it did form was a TD9 count bottom. It did it last night at 2 o'clock in the morning. That's when it finally confirmed. That led to a very nice rally, an A to B equals CD pattern. That created a sell the D point when we got that bear sash candle at 9 o'clock this morning. Now, what that did was it took price back to basically support. Support being the bottom of its bullish structured profile for a 30-minute basis. There was a close below it at 10 and price closed just back above it at 1030. So right now what you've got going on on the 30-year treasury for its 30-minute time frame, you've got a bottom out here and you've got a consolidation with inside its profile. On the top of that profile is your resistance level out there. That's at 125, call 126. Uh, no, call 125, so how do I figure that out? One, uh, call it um, 125.09. And if price closes above 125.09, then you'd see a run to the 125.26 level out there. Now, that's really the short-term time frame stuff that we're looking at. What I want you to also pay attention to, we, we took a look at that monthly time frame chart. So let me show you what else is going on there. We'll switch over, take a look at the black background charts for you. Now, what you'll also see here is prices trading below all profile levels. Now, there is an A to B equals CD pattern that's in place out there. So a close below last month's low is going to then trigger or a failed TD9 count bottom. Now, that's going to suggest lower price. We take a look at the A to B equals CD patterns out there. These are for price projection levels on a monthly basis. If, in fact, last month's low fails, then that's going to suggest a move down in the 118-ish area and below that, 104, 105. So I think you're in a good trade. Market conditions suggest that uh, price may... Um, I might, might try to bounce out there. There are patterns that suggest that, but I'd still stick with that position. I'd still stick with that long position out there. If we take a look at, let me see if I've got that page still set up here. We looked at this yesterday when I did this segment with Tom. Is that it? No, that's not it. It's this right here. So here is the year to date. Um, uh, uh, this is through yesterday. I haven't done it through today, but this is the year to date, uh, the year to date uh, chart, the, the annual chart, the yearly chart. For uh, the primary core 
instruments that would uh, kind of make up a balanced portfolio, so to speak, or at least in the old days. You've got the U.S. You've got currencies, so for that, we're using the U.S. dollar index. Look at that wide-ranging bar on a yearly basis. That actually has generated an A to B equals CD to the upside. You don't see that on a yearly chart too often, but that's what it has. The SPIs, you're already below last year's low out there. And I'll go back and do the studies on this. Uh, and the study that I would be looking for is if you close below the prior year's low, does that typically then lead to at least a second year? Those of you that are longtime listeners know that the markets move in these chunks of two and three oftentimes to create these what we'll refer to as knee-jerk reaction, highs or lows out there. And so that's why I'll be looking for that uh, second bar. The emerging markets, that's in your upper right-hand side, that's down 25% for the year. That's headed lower, especially with the U.S. dollar index headed higher. So you don't want to have any of your portfolio exposed to emerging markets. Or I certainly would suggest that you do not want that out there but it's really the 30-year treasury that's on your right hand side um, we're well below last year's lows in fact let's the 30-year treasury is back below the lows of 2013 yeah so very likely staying long the tbt is really what you want to uh, do out there now maybe you're going to trade around that uh, jim but i do like the trade uh, congratulations uh, to you on that, and I hope that the information I provided to you is of assistance out there. Next question coming in from, uh, oops, what the heck happened there? Coming in from Raymond. Raymond writes in, let's see here. Raymond writes in, I took a position in Yang at the end of August. Am I expecting too much for this ETF to reach, question mark, the ETF shorts for the Chinese to reach what? You, didn't, you put a reach question mark out there. So, Ray, um, that didn't help Stevie out here, but that doesn't matter. We're going to go take a look at Yang. Now, what I want to do is first I'm going to fire those up on my white background chart. So just give me a moment to get over there. Um, actually, while I'm doing that, I should kind of multitask and get back to our three time frames out here. And take a look at, uh, where is that, right here. So let's get Yang up on our screen, Y-A-N-G. There we go. Now let's go back to my white background charts. I think you're still looking at the black background charts, or at least I hope that you are. And uh, we'll get Yang queued up there. And that will both be between both sets of charts. That will provide us with the information that I believe Ray is looking for. So when we take a look at Yang. This is the three-time bear China ETF out there. And so your next level of resistance, if we just took a look at this, which is all I've got to take a look at, I don't know which stocks make up uh, Yang. You might want to take a look at that and do some actual analysis on maybe the top 10 uh, stocks out there. They probably represent close to 50% of this ETF. I don't know that to be the case, but you certainly want to take a look at that. But you're above the top of the daily and weekly profile. So your next level of resistance rate on Yang is 26.19. If price can clear that, then you're off to the races. Where would the races be? The races would be $43.87. We'll get back from this break. We'll finish looking at Yang for Ray. Steve Roach with TFNN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at that Yang out here, Y-A-N-G. Uh, this is for uh, uh, for Jim, I believe, uh, who had uh, uh, written in about it. And so as we take a look at Yang, I'd mentioned 43.87 as a uh, likely price target. Eventually, that is assuming that the first level that's got to fail, and this is your next area of resistance to the top of that monthly profile, that's at 26.19. So close above that, no problem. We don't have any kind of bullish reversal signal, any kind of signals out here in the daily the uh, weekly is only in bar number seven. It's above profile levels out there. So everything here in Yang looks pretty good, meaning that uh, the China market or the 25, whatever instruments are in that ETF for Yang, look like they want to continue to head lower. So I do hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request. Let's go to our let's go to our next request. The next request coming in by phone, and it's Michael. Michael in Poland. Is that true? Yeah. yeah Wonderful. I actually was going to talk about the China large cap. The FXI. Okay. okay. Well, yeah. let's put the let's put the FXI. So tell me what you're doing and what information you need and how I can best help you. Okay. Well, there's this big party Congress on the weekend. And uh, this president, he has to get reelected. And um, I was looking at very unusual option activity and I'm thinking that, well, maybe, just maybe um, Taiwan is opening up in two days. Uh, Hong Kong is about to open. Macau is already opened. Um, Japan is opened. Uh, so many of the Asian nations, they're, they're reopening. So I'm thinking maybe, just maybe he, he gets nice and uh, he, they, they announce, you know, the, the party Congress announces that uh, they're going to uh, reopen the economy in China. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you're looking to take a long position. Yeah. That's Perfect. Right. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. So what we can do here is we're going to go take a look at the patterns uh, that would uh, suggest taking a long position makes sense. So when we take a look at FXI on a daily basis, what we can see here is there's uh, these black diagonal, if you're watching this on Tiger TV, there's these black diagonal lines that form on my charts when a Rhodes momentum indicator signal is present. And one is present right now. That is a market that gets stretched to the uh, downside, in this case here, FXI stretched to the downside. Now, what this needs is a bullish reversal candle to confirm that bottom. Today's yeah. candle could end up being a bullish hammer candle, Michael, but it is also yeah, it a gap. Like a hammer. Yeah. yeah, but it's also a gap to the downside. So the question becomes which, and, and the reason why it's a gap to the downside most likely is because of the changes in currency out there. So when you are trading FXI, you're not just trading the entities that are inside there, you're also trading the currency conversion out there, and that makes it a little bit more complicated. At least it makes it a little bit more complicated for me. So I don't know whether that's a truly a hammer candle because of the gap to the downside. Uh, in fact, I would say it's not. And the reason I would say it's not, Michael, is what I like to do in instances like this is fill in the blank, so to speak, is to fill in that gap. And if we fill that in with a body of a candle, then I say that's the candle formation and it's neither a gap to the downside nor a uh, hammer candle. What does that candle actually represent? 
However, let's say that all of that is just uh, minutia and nonsense. You get that bullish reversal candle today, and that gets you into a, a trade out there. Your first level of resistance is going to be at the uh, what's referred to as the oscillator and change line. That is currently printed at 2582. If price were able to take that over, then your real resistance levels, your counter trend move, would take you or should take you to 2632 to the 2665 level. Now, that's a daily okay. time frame chart. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, that also has a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. So on a weekly basis, you need a bullish reversal candle on that. And then price would need to overcome 2670. Now, that number is going to change slightly, but it needs yeah. to overcome the weekly oscillator and change line in order to suggest that it's going to get some traction out there. That's what the weekly chart says. So the weekly says potential, but I would wait for that bullish reversal candle. On the monthly okay. chart here, this is where things could go really south. And what I mean by that is last month, the month of September, very much like when we took a look at the 30-year Treasury, this completed a TD9 count bottom. That says that last month's low is really critical, Michael. And that low okay. is 25.72. Now, if price closed below 25.72, odds favor that China is going to continue to go down. That at least would be the message. Now, it's only the 11th, so we're pretty early in the month to make that choice out there. So what you're really watching for, daily basis, looking for some type of uh, bullish reversal candle. Weekly, some type of bullish reversal candle. Both of those you want to see closes above their oscillator and change lines, 25.80 or so on the daily, 26.70 on the weekly. The next thing I would do before I would take a trade, an, an early trade on the daily, would I would go to a short-term time frame chart. And we take a look at the FXI, I have the 30-minute chart up here. And as I'm looking for some type of bottom patterns out there, I just don't mm -hmm. have it. What we do have, though, is right now price is taking on its oscillator and change line. And that's at 25.05. If, mm -hmm. if at 12 noon, 13 minutes from now, price closes over 25.05, Michael, you should expect or anticipate what will happen with the FXI is a further rally. And that mm -hmm. likely rally would take us up to there's new profiles that formed above price. In essence, that says overhead supply. That means kind of a bearish message out here. That does not mean that price won't get up there or that price can't take it out. It's just that is the message being delivered to us at 11.48 in the morning. But a close above 25.05, Michael, that would signal move up to 25.46 or 25.56 or 25.65. And if you get that, um, you know, maybe maybe this is giving you the information you need to take a long position in China. Does that help you out? Or is there some? Yeah. On the monthly chart, go back to the monthly. Is that the 20 EMA on the monthly, your, your, average, your, moving, it, your moving average? It is not. It's the, it's, it's the oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line is the difference between the 19 and the 39 month. Okay, because where there's a monthly chart here, so the, the 19 and 39 uh, period uh, uh, price oscillator, yeah. and that's what that is doing. When 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 price is below a red oscillator and change line, the message yeah. to you is very clear. It tells us number one, we have a falling price oscillator, and the price oscillator is below zero. Those are bearish conditions. It's not going to, that tool is not going to tell us whether a bottom is being made. It tells us what the current conditions are. Then you and mm -hmm. I look to the pattern. So for example, on FXI on a monthly basis, the last TD9 count bottom that formed out here, I'm going back, that took hold was back in February 2016. And that led mm -hmm. to one nice healthy rally out there. There's a TD9 count bottom that formed out here most previously in December of 2021. That pattern lasted for a month. And then it just simply took a move south. And now you've got the next one that is out here. So it closed again below last month's low. And price is trading below that, 25.72. That's really going to suggest that the FXI wants to continue to move lower. Okay? Okay. Great. Thank you very much. You bet. Thanks so much for calling. And uh, let's go to our next request out here. The next request is coming in from Hector. And Hector wanted to take a look at ExxonMobil one of uh, his and Patty's favorites. So let's go to Hector's question. It goes like this. Happy taco tamale turnaround time Tuesday out there. So we got Hector. If the market turns around, it's Hector that made that call out there. Last night, reviewing your archive seminar ABC section, the hair on the back of his neck stood on edge. Wow. Uh, when looking at the XOM Weekly, has it all, has it all, strong side of the C to D leg, about a 40% pullback in the B to C, wide ranging bars on the way back to the B point. Next one, maybe C up. Weekly is looking mucho strong. Do you concur? Well, we're going to go take a look at the weekly chart for ExxonMobil. We'll take a look at those uh, A to B equals CDs out there. 
And uh, we'll do that as soon as we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at ExxonMobil. This is for Hector and Patty. And Hector is looking at this A to B equals CD pattern that I've got drawn in here from the uh, weekly time frame. And absolutely, Hector, that is an A to B equals CD pattern here. Uh, just on the daily time frame, uh, price did pull back today, tested and rejected the bottom of its profile. That's where the buyers are lined up. That's at 96.84. Hector, the A to B equals CD pattern for ExxonMobil that I think you'll like is the yearly one. That's the one on the right-hand side of my screen out there. On a yearly basis, just to give you a feel, the swing point is at 104.76, and that was in 2014. There were 2.9 billion shares that traded. This year alone, we're at 5.4 billion shares out there. And so a close above 104.76, Hector, is going to suggest that ExxonMobil is going to go target the 133.30 level, maybe even 161.30. So I think that's the one that will wet your whistle out there and prices above its yearly profile level. And that's at 95 bucks, even Stephen. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks much for writing in. And hopefully you get your turnaround Tuesday out there. The last chart that we're going to take a look at is for Ford. This is for Dennis inside the Tiger's Den. Now, Dennis, Ford generated a TD9 count bottom. It did that on October the uh, 3rd. 
Then went ahead and took price right up to the, where the sellers reside at the top of the profile. He did get a close above it on October 5th. Stevie likes to see two closes above resistance. He didn't get that. The very next day, back inside the profile. Price found support yesterday at the bottom of profile, same today. What you have going on right now inside of Ford, Dennis, is a good old consolidation with inside his profiles. That's between 11.34 and 12.40 out there. Price can close above 12.40. Then it may be trying to make its way up to 14.23. On a weekly chart, you've got wave number seven. That's courtesy of Basil Chapman. It's just a very small portion of that um, out there. That's what created the bottom back in July. On a monthly time frame, I don't have any kind of a bottom signal out here. In fact, you would get an A to B equal CD to the downside if Ford were to close on a monthly basis below the uh, level of 10.61. So those are the areas to be watching out. Uh, if we take a quick peek here, what's the NQ doing uh, since we uh, last spoke about it? Um, really not much. I take that back. If you see on the uh, 240, price is dealing with that oscillator and change line. That is certainly a level that you want to be looking for. If price closes above that, that suggests a further rally, like 11.043, 11.101, or even 11.136. Folks, stay tuned for the great program that's lined up today, and I will see you tomorrow on Wonderful Wednesday. Please have a terrific Tuesday. Be safe out there.